when I was finishing my doctorate, I took up kite surfing, which is where you take a giant kite and a surfboard and you have it drag you out into the ocean. And I was actually building uh, all my own gear. So I was sewing my own kites, building my own kite boards. Uh, and at the same time, I was documenting everything on my personal website. So I'd write web pages about how to make a kite board. But it was taking me just as long to write a web page about it as it was to make the kite board. So I knew that there was, I needed a better tool to do this. Simultaneously, people were contacting me and asking, could they meet me at the beach? Could they get my CAD files? Could they learn more about this? So it was clear that there's a real need for a tool to make it easy to document what you did and connect with other people. Basically, anybody who's looking to solve a problem is going to search for that problem and then almost invariably end up at Instructables. One of the things that we find is sort of the gateway drug for Instructables is food. So people think, oh, uh, it's just about robots or maybe LED lights. No, 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 no. that's a tiny, tiny proportion of the things that are on Instructables. We've got something like 120,000 projects and growing. But one of the things that people will come in for is everyone has to eat. And so eventually, even if you don't cook anything, you're going to have to look up something like how to make a homemade Play-Doh recipe or how to make cookies for your kid's sports team, and you'll end up on Instructables. And then you start looking around, and then you find, hey, my other hobbies are represented here too. And uh, next thing you know, you spent half an hour and, uh, and are ready to get out that project that you're really excited about. The big change and what we're riding on in Instructables is that the barriers to sharing what you do have been erased. So I think people have been making things for forever. But the difference now is that they can now find others who are like them and they don't feel isolated. And we focus on helping people tell the story of why they did something and then how they did it. One of the things that we see is when people are selling things, for example, on Etsy, there's a, there's a woman named Tota Smell who does these amazing tatted masks and uh, necklaces. Um, but she sells these on Etsy, and she puts the Instructables up about, here's how I made it. And uh, the initial reaction is, well, why would you put that up? Now people can make it, and they won't buy your things. But of course, what happens is people look at that, and then they say, oh wow, that's incredible, that's amazing. Even though I know how you do it, I could never do it. That's a, you're only selling it for how much? That's amazing. And so she finds that putting, putting up Instructables and pointing to her Etsy store is a really nice way to tell her story and also get a new path of traffic. I think that it's, it's about engagement. So you can really enjoy jazz more if you play an instrument. You can enjoy going to a restaurant more if you cook. And I think the same thing works with Instructables. If you make things, you really understand what goes into making something and you can appreciate the things around you, all things, from your electronics to your clothing to your car to your furniture, just understanding what went into that and appreciating it and really wanting to have things that are high quality.